And welcome to Hollywood Smoke here in Santa Monica. This is Steve Kim for another edition of 10 Count. I'm joined by the sports god, Dave Smith, and the institution, Ken Miller. Guys, the March of Ides. Boxing really heats up. We have two really good fights on HBO in this month. March 14th, Sergey Kovalev defends a light heavyweight title against Jean Pascal. And March 28th, originally, now it's going to be scheduled for April 18th, Lucas Matisse against Ruslan Provodnikov. Let's go to the one on March 14th. Dave, did Sergey Kovalev surprise you with the way he outboxed and outthought one of your favorite fighters, Bernard Hopkins? Absolutely. I, I, I kind of liked Bernard in that fight before it happened. I thought he might give him a little bit of a boxing lesson because I thought that Kovalev was a guy who came straight in and straight out. He showed me a lot that fight. Not only is he tough, not only can he punch, but strategically he's a pretty good boxer as well, which I didn't think so. I think Kov Pascal is athletic, but he's not really a good boxer. He was exposed a couple of times against Bernard, so I think this is going to be all the way Kovalev dominating this fight. Ken, even though Adonis Stevens and his quote unquote the linear champion with with the work he's put in and the fact he basically backed out of a fight against Kovalev last year is Kovalev the light heavyweight of the moment do you blame him for backing <laughs> <out> against Kovalev <laughs> look I, I think I really think that Kovalev is a fantastic fighter I thought I didn't think that Bernard Hopkins was going to beat him I knew eventually that the Bernard Hopkins show was going to come to an end it came to an end at a, with a guy who really could fight, but I'm not going to count Pascal out. And the reason why I'm not going to count Pascal out, he's had a couple of subpar performances. We know, or I know, most people in boxing, if you'd have asked them three years ago, they would have been talking about Pascal like he was Triple G because he starts showing that level of talent. I think it's going to be a really, really good fight, but for Kovalov's sake, I hope it doesn't go to the scorecards yeah. in Canada because if it goes to the scorecards, I don't think he can get a decision. Yeah, home canvas advantage. This fight is at the Bell Center, and that is certainly the home layer of Jean Pascal. Here's another issue, though, with Pascal. I wonder about his chin. I don't know if he's ever faced the puncher uh, of the ilk of Kovalev. I mean, say what you want about Bernard. He's old. He's kind of a spoiler. He knows how to survive. He's got but, a steel chin, baby. Uh, yeah, but, <laughs> no but, doubt about but that. Dave, I thought it was stunning to see him get knocked down in the first. And in the 12th round, I think that's the closest I've ever seen Bernard to come to really being stopped, and he was certainly buzzed. Absolutely. And now you made a good point about Pascal's chin against Kovalev. The, this guy's a killer. And this guy's gonna, He reminds me of GGG, uh, Triple G, a, a little bit of the light heavyweight division. Uh, I think he's going to test Pascal's chin. And you just don't realize the power of these guys until you get in there with them about what you're up against and what you have to deal with. Like Mike Tyson used to say, everybody has a plan until they get hit. Pascal's going to find out real quick what it's like to be in there with Kovalev. But Kovalev better not miss. Yeah. When, 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 he, when, when he fires the shot that could end it, he better not miss, and he better not expose himself because I know that Juan Pasquale can punch him. Mm -hmm. Ken, is there a better fight on paper for us bloodthirsty savages than Lucas Matisse, Ruslan Provodnikov? Oh, God, no. <laughs> oh, God. I mean, this fight, you don't need a ring. Steel cage. You don't need ropes. You don't need a steel cage. These are going to be two guys that are going to fight. It's going to be like it's in a, in a phone booth. And it's going to be blood. It's going to be sweat. Uh, there's not going to be a whole lot of tears because these are two of the toughest guys that you possibly could find. And neither one of them have reversed yeah. in their vehicle. They only know how to go one way. And it's going to be a fight to the finish. I think HBO has really struck goal and with this fight right here. You know, this is interesting. This fight was supposed to be at the StubHub Center. That blend you was balked. Now they're going to go to Verona. But I think certain fights are so good. And it kind of reminds me. I'm telling you, I don't want to give this fight too much hype and have it not live up to expectation. Dave, I get the same feeling I did prior to the first Castillo-Corrales fight back in 2005. Really? Yes, I think it's that good. I do, too. And I remember you were saying this is going to be an absolutely great fight between Castillo-Corrales before yeah. it happened. This is like the old demolition derby I used to watch <laughs> when I was growing up. Cards would go head up all the time like that. I, I like Matisse in this fight, but this is going to be a really action-packed, great fight, as Ken was saying. And the, the fact, how did Provodnikov lose to Chris Algieri? That's the I don't I, think he did. I can't get past no, he that. Did. To he this did. day, he I did. watched that fight. I think the worst thing that happened to Ruslan, is that the first two left hooks knocked the guy down, and I think he understood or believed in his own mind the next big punch is going to end the fight. 
With that said, you knock a guy down twice. I thought he won at least five or six rounds. Uh, to me, I thought the most mystifying decision last year happened June 14th with Algeria getting his hands raised against Provolov. Right, and you, you, you know, you brought up Triple G. Provolov is, he doesn't have the skill set of Golovkin because Golovkin is so skilled. But this guy, every single shot that he throws is a knockout shot. And my only question is if he has thrown too many punches to where he's not going to be able to bring that level of velocity in a fight against Matisse, who's going to be there for him all the time. You know That's what concerns concern. me? As a guy that loves Matisse, I nicknamed him the machine. I saw him last year in his first fight against Johnny Molina. He got sent to the canvas twice. Uh, guys like that, once they physically erode, Dave, it kind of goes down quickly for guys of that style. Absolutely, and they don't last long, guys, with that style, especially when they butt heads and go up against each other who kind of fights the same way they do. But uh, is Matisse the type of guy, Steve, that you're never the same after you fight him? I he think gives you, he gives, like, Triple G, you're never the same after you get him. One fight of the him. best stats of boxing the past five years that I love, he went through a 12-fight stretch, guys. He scored like 27 knockdowns. I mean, he is painting that canvas like Picasso. But again, I don't think either guy has ever been in with another physical bully. So now you've got two irresistible forces going up against each other. I'm going to say it right now. Uh, we're only into February. I think this could end up being the fight of the year. I, I, you know what? I'm going to be out there. <laughs> You're going to go to Verona? Yeah. Wow. There's yes. no there there. There's no worry. there there. <laughs> Look. Here's the thing about this fight that you really have to love because everyone's going to be so hyped up no matter what we get on May 2nd. It's not going to be what we want, but we know what but we're going to get one, yeah. on this particular fight. And I'm with you, Steve. I think this fight could potentially be a candidate, a prime candidate early on. It's my candidate for fight of the year. Okay, hold on. I'm going to ask you a hypothetical. If you could have a ringside seat for both for one fight, Okay, putting aside everything, Dave, it, would it be Provodnikov Matisse or Mayweather Pacquiao? Oh, uh, Provodnikov Matisse. Hmm, Absolutely, really? yeah. I, I think um, Manny and Floyd might be a bit, a bit of a stinker. Uh, I, I don't think it's going to be a great action fight. I think Floyd's going to give him a, a, do a paint job on him and give him a boxing lesson. Okay. Yeah, it's funny. I always, hmm. one of the things that I've always asked in, in my multiple decades in the sport of boxing is what potential does a fight have of being a stinker? This and fight. You know which one. Look, 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 look right. Second. Well, this fight with Matisse and Provogal is 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 one that I absolutely have no question. It's not going to be a stinker. We know that May second, one guy is fighting because he has to have the fight. The other guy is fighting because he's in love with money. One needs the money. One's in love with money, and one wants to get more money. I think that. Again, you boxing fans uh, with selective amnesia. <laughs> You've been duped again. Yeah, I'll, I'll just wrap it up by saying this. Provodnikov Matisse is what I call a peanut butter and jelly fight. They just go great together. So there is no there there? There is no there there a in good Verona. Fight. There's alcohol and gambling, right? Yeah, but try to uh, get there to Verona. Yeah, but try to get to Verona. It's planes, trains, and automobiles. All right, well, that's it for this edition of 10 Count. On behalf of the Sports God and the Institution, this is Steve Kim saying, till the next round. Goodbye, everybody.